The plot below is a Lissajous figure created with the parametric equations x of t equals a cosine bt and y of t equals c sine dt. We want to find possible positive values for a, b, c, and d. To begin, we should be familiar with our basic cosine function graphed here in red and the basic sine function graphed here in black. Notice how looking at the parametric equations, the x values are controlled by the cosine function and the y values are controlled by the sine function. Both cosine and sine have a maximum function value of one and a minimum function value of negative one. So by analyzing the x coordinates of our figure, we should be able to determine a, where the absolute value of a would be the amplitude of our cosine function, and by analyzing the y coordinates of our figure, we should be able to find c, where the absolute value of c would be the amplitude of our sine function. We'll begin by determining a by analyzing the x values of our figure, more specifically, the maximum x value and the minimum x value. Looking at our figure, if we project this figure onto the x-axis, notice how the maximum x value is positive six and the minimum x value is negative six. And therefore, since we want to use a positive value for a, a would have to be six, meaning the amplitude of our cosine function would be six. So to begin, we know that x of t must equal six times cosine of bt. And now we'll analyze the y coordinates of our figure to determine c, where the absolute value of c would be the amplitude of the sine function. So if we project our figure onto the y-axis, notice how the maximum function value is positive five, and the minimum function value would be negative five. And once again, because we want to use a positive value for c, c would be positive five. So now we know that y of t equals five times sine dt. Now remember the coefficients of t would affect the period of the cosine and sine functions. Where if we have y equals sine b theta or y equals cosine b theta, the period would be equal to two pi divided by b when the frequency would be the reciprocal of the period. Now b and d are not unique even though their ratio will be. To simplify things, let's assume we want the entire figure to be traced from t equals zero to t equals two pi radians. This doesn't have to be true, but it will simplify things slightly. So what we'll do is trace out this figure and determine how many cycles of the cosine function and how many cycles of the sine function it will take, which will help us determine b and d. Before we do this though, let's find the point in our figure when t equals zero. Notice when t equals zero, x of zero would be six times cosine zero, which would be six, and y of zero would be five times sine zero, which would be zero. So when t equals zero, we'd be at this point on the figure, and the orientation as t increases would be in this direction here. And now we'll determine how many cycles of our cosine function it will take to trace out our figure. Before we do this though, if we take a look at the basic cosine function, notice how it starts at a maximum, and then when it returns to that maximum, we have one complete cycle of our cosine function. So here we're starting at positive six. Every time we return to positive six, it'll represent one cycle of our cosine function. So let's go ahead and begin tracing. Notice here we're returning back to positive six. This represents one complete cycle of our cosine function, and we keep going. We're back to positive six again, that's two complete cycles. And we're back to positive six a third time, and therefore it takes three complete cycles of our cosine function to trace our figure. And since we want to trace the figure, from t equals zero to t equals two pi radians, that means the period of our cosine function would have to be two pi divided by three, and therefore b, the coefficient of t, must be three. We can also say the frequency would be three cycles per two pi radians.
So again, b is equal to three. So now we know that x of t equals six times cosine of three t. And now we'll trace the entire figure again and determine how many cycles of the sine function it would take to trace our figure. But before we do this, let's look at the basic sine function. Notice that the sine function starts at zero and then it has to return to zero not once but twice for one complete cycle. So the y value would have to return to zero twice to represent one complete cycle of the sine function. So let's go ahead and start tracing. The y value starts at zero. Here it returns to zero once, but it has to return to zero twice for one complete cycle. So we keep tracing. We're back to zero a second time here. So that represents one complete cycle of our sine function. Keep tracing. At zero once and at zero twice. So it takes two complete cycles of our sine function to trace this figure. And therefore, if we want to use t equals zero to t equals two pi radians to trace our figure, the period would have to be two pi divided by two. And therefore b, or in this case d, the coefficient of t would have to be two. And therefore y of t equals five sine two t. Now as I mentioned earlier, b and d are not unique, but their ratio is. As long as the cosine function completes three cycles, every time our sine function completes two, we would trace out our figure, but the interval for t would change. But I think using these t values does help simplify the process slightly. I hope this was helpful.